you doing? Okay. Hey, you guys, how are you? Hey, we're doing Gary. well. How yes, are you? Yes, here. <laughs> I didn't even know it went live. I was still playing with my computer. I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. How is everybody? Welcome Everybody's to Pondering Mics. Guess what? We are with the wonderful chef Jerry again by popular demand. You guys all blew up my phone and my messages saying you wanted him back. So, guess what? We got him. So, Jerry, how are you? I'm doing well. Well, thank you so much for uh, having me again. Of course. And, uh, welcome everybody out there uh, to paying attention and hopefully we can uh, make an easy dinner for everyone <laughs> when they come home from uh, work and they don't have that much time. I want to make something that's kind of easy for everybody to do. Yeah, I think um, I, I think what you told me we were cooking today and doing, I'm really excited about it. So we also have a couple little videos, you guys, that I'll be um, showing in between Jerry cooking. But, you know, Jerry, why don't you tell everybody what's on the menu today? Well, um, we're going, uh, Michelle and I are trying not to drink during the week. So instead of a cocktail, we're going to make a mocktail, something mm -hmm. that's just light, refreshing. We're getting into spring, although today you wouldn't uh, know it with the rain that we've had. But yesterday it was in the mid 70s. Something sure. that when you come home and you want that glass of wine, and you want that cocktail, and you want something to wind down, having this little mocktail, something refreshing to have in your hand to you know, wind down after you get home. Uh, without having the alcohol, it's something, you know, a little bit refreshing and it's a nice change to do when you're not, or when you are on the wagon and you want to refrain from the alcohol. Yeah. And what uh -huh. else? What else you got for us? Okay. I'm sorry. Then we're going to do a uh, spicy garlic edamame. Mm. And then I'm going, you know, you had some requests for a little bit more sushi. So we're going to do something without the seaweed because a lot of people don't like the flavor of the seaweed that's a little bit chewy. So we're going to use uh, soy paper. Okay. I'm going to do a vegetarian soy paper wrap, some of the items that I got out of the, out of the garden this morning. And then we're going to do um, one of our favorites during the summer, but we're going to do it now, is um, a vegetable um, parmesan, but we're going to do eggplant parmesan today. Yum. Yum. With fresh tomatoes, fresh basil, and just simple ingredients, something just unprocessed uh, to the most part, and just something really, really good. I think everything you've mentioned was is going to make my mouth drool because I'm not there still. I know a lot of people asked um, why I wasn't there last time to, to eat your food. We're still a little bit into COVID. So I think this is safe for us right now. And I actually got to eat some of your food um, last Sunday when you were doing yep. your catering. So that was awesome. So yep, on sushi um, Sundays, you came and set up a sushi bar and uh, you helped out a little bit and I had to pay you with some sushi, right? <laughs> you did. And Michelle helped me with some champagne. So yes, yes. We, we, I definitely <laughs> got plenty. So um, why don't you start, uh, I think, what are you making first, the mocktail? Just the mocktail and, and okay. you can call it uh, something like a mojito, um, but uh, Trader Joe's will uh, do that a little sparkling lime soda water. Got a nice glass and what we're going to do is I'm going to just put in a little bit of ice first and out of the garden now is some really nice fresh mint mm. and if you like cucumbers if you like lemon anything like that you can put in and we're going to put a little bit of the fresh mint from the garden I saw that in your garden yeah you can take a spoon or you can take a wooden doll but just you just want to kind of mix it up a little bit just so that the oils from the mint get crushed and released into the ice. And one of the things that I do have here in Poway, uh, since it does get hot, I started my strawberries uh, probably about a month ago. And I got a couple fresh strawberries. Um, and we're going to put strawberry instead of lime because the uh, sparkling water has a lime essence in it. So what we're going to do just for color contrast, I'm slicing a couple of strawberries. And again, I'm just going to mold that just a little bit 
to release a little bit of the strawberry flavor. And then I'm gonna take one more strawberry, put it in. I'm gonna open up my sparkling lime water and pour it over and we're gonna have our mocktail. Yum. And it's just something light and refreshing, really colorful. You see the green in there. Yep. And if you want, you can take one more sprig of the fresh lime and put it in there and cheers Perfect. for the Perfect. mint, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, so. cheers, cheers. And it is really, really nice. I'm gonna drink it as I'm filming <laughs> over the next hour. It's uh, really, really tasty. Really That's tasty. awesome. Uh, Jerry, so what I'll do is let me show a little quick video while you get some other things. I know you have to get some things done. Um, okay. we're, not, we're not cooking with cauliflower today, but once you show what we picked out of your garden and I'll show the video today, do you have those behind you? I do. Why don't you shoot, yeah, why don't you shoot the video and then we'll okay. swing back and then I'll show you the uh, end product that we have. Perfect. Let's see if we I can do that. Walk through first. But look at that beautiful cauliflower. Oh, geez. Yeah. So that's something, you know, because I want to pick that and I've got this purple one that I need to pick. Oh, yeah. Look how colorful that is. Yeah. Jeez. You can see, see, I don't use pesticides, so I know yeah. this one has some uh, um, white fly. You gotcha. See, you know, so I get that how, on some. How old of, are these? These are probably three months because they take a while. You know, they get pretty big as far as the plant itself. Yeah. You know, sometimes they'll produce, you know, big things. Other times, yeah. you know, just genetically, you know. Okay. But, that was awesome. Now, I want to show you guys what Jerry did. He actually picked a couple of those for us today. Let yeah, me show I you. I, uh, pick, we have the white um, cauliflower, but this is called a cheddar cauliflower. Yeah, if you look at my hands, I got pretty big hands, but this is about nine inches across. Really nice, beautiful cheddar cauliflower. And cheddar is just because of the color, nothing else. And then we have a really beautiful, a nice smaller one. I kind of mentioned, if you saw in the video, the plant themselves and the leaves get quite large. Yeah. And depending on whether it's the nutrition or just the genetics of that actual seed will be the size. And yeah. usually the purple is just a little bit smaller, but you see that really nice colorful color. And a lot of times I'll take the purple, the cheddar or the orange color with the white and cut that up. And you could do a curry um, uh, spice on it, a little bit of uh, garlic or oil, and just braise it and put it in the oven and roast it. That's really good, opposed to uh, um, boiling it, because you're going to get a nice flavor, and it's going to retain some of its color a little bit more. Yeah, let me, show, let, let me show this little video. I'm going to show everybody that you actually cut it for us today. Yes. From the plant size. Uh, you just pulled that right out of the ground. Yeah. Look at that. Jeez. Ooh, good catch. Oh, wow. Any grocery store, man. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, it really is. It's really fun. That's why I really like to... My daughter's growing up, obviously, with the chickens and the baby chicks, but just growing. Um, my grandfather was a, a big gardener, my mom and my dad, and my uh, brother, he's into gardening, my whole family. But just something about going out to the garden and picking things right from your backyard, just the freshness. And again, I don't use pesticides. And I mentioned that there's a little white flies, just little gnats that sit in there. And all you have to do is just wash it really well. And it's perfectly, you know, you get rid of all the little bugs that may be in there, you know, using it for a home here and there. I know True. it sounds a little bit odd, but um, it's something that we take for granted, not being able to pick a really nice uh, vegetables. Yeah, it's beautiful. No, that's that's really beautiful. I was amazed on how big they got. The color yeah, is so really vibrant and steaming them. You're right. It'll keep all the color and integrity. So, right. all right, let's move on. What you got? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to um, go into the edamame first. So okay. we'll go over to the stove. Everybody, that is Michelle behind the camera today. She's a she's our camera helper. Okay. <laughs> so now I've got my wok that I like to use just because I can uh, throw it in. Um, and again, I like to let everybody know where I get my products from. And I'm not going to say a wholesaler thing so that you would be able to get, but from Costco, or Costco has edamame, 
This is from Smart and Final that I get in their frozen section and their soybeans in the pod. So that actually means that there are they're in the pod. You can buy soy soybeans that are uh, um, not in the pod if you just want the beans to add to a salad. And what I do, they're pre-cooked, but what I do is I put them in boiling water for about two minutes and then strain them and then just put them in a, pot, um, a pan here or a bowl. I'm getting rid of some of the water. So now the key here is I have about a tablespoon of olive oil in the wok, and that's going to get hot. Now Michelle's going to come over here to my garlic. And one thing I like to do is to use a microplane. These are great. I think I used this the last time where we made our uh, mocktail. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is just finely grade the garlic opposed to chopping it. You can see the um, garlic adheres to the back of the micropane, plane rather. And I'm doing two cloves of garlic. And now we're going to come back over. Now my oil is hot. I'm adding the garlic in. Going to grab a wooden spoon. You don't want to use metal. And now I'm pulling it off because you can see that garlic besides releasing a really nice aroma, is lightly browning. Now I'm going to throw the edamame in. Okay. Where now that olive oil with the garlic is releasing the flavor in to the edamame. Now I'm keeping it off of the heat so I don't burn the garlic anymore, but I really want the flavor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm using the hui fong or the chili garlic sauce or sauce. Yeah. And I'm just going to put a little bit in, probably about a half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon. The other thing that you can get is handashi, which is like a bonito shaving or a flavor. I'm just putting a little bit of that. If you want it to be um, vegetarian, then you don't have to put that now, this is my squeeze bottle with ponzu, which is a citrus soy sauce. And now what I'm doing, just put about two ounces of that into it, and I toss that around. And then lastly, I'm grabbing a pinch of kosher salt and putting that on, putting it back up. And some of that ponzu, the citrus soy sauce, is releasing the flavor with the garlic, with the chili sauce. And then now I'm just tossing. You can really see how the flavors come together. And basically I'm just putting a really nice flavor on the outside of the pod. The heat is just adding and releasing. Now I've got a nice bowl here. And this is something that is really easy to do, quick. And what you can do is cook the edamame ahead of time, leave them in that bowl then that I did, and you can see that it only takes about two minutes, and you have wonderful, Michelle will try these. Oh, of course she will. Try these, are her one of her favorites. But again, if you don't want the garlic, you don't want the spice, you don't have to do that. You can just boil those edamame, put some kosher salt on them, and you can serve them to the kids like that. Hey, uh, Jerry, Janice has a question. She said, why are metal utensils bad with garlic? It's not necessarily, I don't know about the garlic. For me, um, usually with pans, you don't wanna, let's say if it's a Teflon coated pan, you don't wanna use metal on that because it's going to uh, scrape and take off the, um, the non-stick surface of that pan. So you're gonna have a little bit more longevity and mm -hmm. uh, length of time that you'll be able to use that pan. Plus, I like using the wooden spoon on there because it's, it'll burn a little bit sometimes, but that's what the wooden spoons are for, you know, just okay. around. So it has nothing to do with flavor. It just has to do with maybe. Yeah, you, yes, yes. I, don't, I don't know from that point of view as far as flavor, but sure. um, yes, on that, it's just, I just use the wooden. It's a little bit easier. Okay. Well, Paige, okay. Paige is jealous because our last show, if everybody remembers, Paige was the one that got to eat everything. So yes, she's so now uh, gets to eat. <laughs> eat the edamame. And I'm That's actually right. making this uh, dish for us when uh, our 21-year-old uh, daughter, Olivia, gets back from her workout. We'll sit down and we're going to actually enjoy the dinner that I'm making. So you, 
I, I know what we eat as far as we are here at our house. One of these days I'll sit there long enough to have a whole meal. Yes. <laughs> All right, so, what you got? So I know we're gonna go into that soy paper wrap, but for timing, what I wanna do is, I'll, excuse me, I wanna move ahead to some of the prep on the eggplant Parmesan, and then we'll put that in the oven and then we'll go back to the uh, sushi roll, okay? Perfect, you're in charge. Okay, so what I did is I had a um, large eggplant and I cut the bottom four pieces off and sliced it just for time uh, purposes and I sauteed them ahead of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, rest of the eggplant and this is a large black eggplant that has a black skin. What I'm going to do is just cut a little bit of the skin like four sides of it. So what that is going to do is remove some of the skin where you're going to have the texture of the skin. Okay. Because it sometimes can be a little bit tough or some people may not like that texture of the skin. I do so that to again, my cucumbers. Yeah, you can, exactly. Some cucumbers can be very waxy so that you want to do that so it's not overpowering. Right. Now, the eggplant you want to use fresh because once you start peeling it, the vitamin C starts oxidizing and starts turning brown. So you want to use it, you know, within 15, 20 minutes of actually prepping it up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece into two pieces to where I have two basically eggplant steaks, approximately maybe three quarters, maybe possibly an inch in height. Um, again, you can go really thin. You can go a little bit thicker. I like a little bit of thickness or a, a thickness to it to where it has a little bit of texture. So it doesn't break down in the cooking process. So as you're eating it, it has some uh, mouth feel to it. Okay. okay. Now what I've done is I have one egg and I'm going to put just about two ounces of milk in it. Yum. I'm going to stir this. Now you can salt and pepper this if you choose to. I'm not going to. I have one bowl with just a little all purpose flour. Okay. And, and, and then, then what I did is if you're worried about allergies, allergies, you can use a non or a rice panko. Nice. Or you Thanks. can use the regular Japanese panko, which is a wheat. And what I like to do, I like using the panko because it gives it a little bit more crunch. Okay. And then I'm just going to use your Italian Progresso. And I went half and half in a bowl just to give a little bit of the Italian seasoning into mm -hmm. my fry. So now we have our flour, our egg, and then our panko. So I'll take these eggplant. I'm first dipping them in the flour. This is so that the egg will adhere to it or stick to it. So I'll get both of them ready. So again, this is something that you can do ahead of time before guests or before you wanna eat. Now I'm dipping the eggplant into the egg. Mm -hmm. You can see now that it's dripping in the wet egg. Nice. Now I'm putting it into the panko and now, and now the, the panko, panko will really stick to the eggplant. Here's the first one. I'm going to start to get my pan reheated. Now this one was tossed in the flour, in the egg wash. This is where it's fun, where you can get your kids, whether they're six, seven, eight years old, put some gloves on and wash their hands and have them do this for you. It's really fun. It's a really good way to get your younger kids into cooking. Make it fun, make it a process, get the whole family involved. Perfect. So now Michelle's gonna follow me over to the stove. Now the key here is to make sure that the oil is not too hot because you don't want to burn the panko. You want to hear a little bit of sizzling going on. Michelle can pan on the other eggplant that I've cooked. And usually it'll take two or three minutes for it to brown off. Now these okay. eggplant are not cooked all the way. And this is what we're going to do is put it in the oven with all our other ingredients until they're cooked. Okay. Okay. You can see where they're a little bit golden brown. I'm just gonna to toss that just for time constraints. Um, that oil was not as hot, but we can wait just two minutes because again, it really doesn't take too long. 
And if you're doing a lot, let's say you're doing 10 pieces of eggplant, if you're feeding, let's say, six or eight people, you may want to change the oil because as the breadcrumbs fall off into the hot oil, they start to burn. And then when you put your next eggplant or maybe the eggplant thereafter, they'll start picking up the burnt pieces and you'll get that burnt flavor on it. So sometimes you may have to just kind of, um, you know, get rid of a little bit of oil, wipe it down with a paper towel, put some more oil in it, reheat it, and then get it going. But again, you see that this really doesn't take that long. These are going to be fine the way they are. I'm going to set these in here. And now we're going to go back over to our other ingredients. So now we have our eggplant that's cooked. You can let that set. You know, that's set for a half hour, for an hour, if you your time constraints or you want to get ahead of uh, the party if you're having guests over or you want to sit down and have a cocktail or some appetizers with your friends. Now, the other good thing is I've got some fresh basil mm. out of my backyard. And believe it or not, these tomatoes are out of my garden. The tomato lasted through the winter. Some really nice purple tomatoes. Now they have like a little tougher skin, just a little bit just from the cold weather because yeah. tomatoes really like the warm nights. And since it's a little bit cold, but we didn't have that much frost this year, if any, that these tomatoes made it through. And that's why I really wanted to make this meal just with the fresh ingredients. I have a short video on that, Jerry. Let me show them what you uh, how you got that out of your garden today. Okay, and I'll start cutting the... Now this plant looks pretty ugly, but it has survived the winter because we really haven't had many frosts here in Poway. Um, but you can see that it still has some fruit on it. This yeah. one isn't that good. But if we come over to this plant, which is a purple oh, tomato. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. I'm going to pick this one That's and this beautiful. is going to be part of... It's an heirloom? Yeah, heirloom. This is a purple nice. tomato, and I picked some yesterday that I'll be cooking this evening in tonight's piece. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, okay so great. It'll be really neat. Okay. But I'm really proud of this. You know, how often can you get tomatoes from, you know, December, January, yeah, and no, February? No way. You know, we're very, very lucky here in California. So, in other words, people don't go off a of visual because nope. this is still going to produce beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, this plant looks... Oh, Jerry's gone. There he okay, is. Okay, I'm right here. This one got some spice. So now I've got a clear bowl. And what I did is I chopped up some of that basil. And I'm going to put that in the bowl. I've got about two tablespoons of some really nice olive oil. Okay. Um, I have about one tablespoon of some finely chopped garlic. And we'll toss that around. Excuse me, with a little spatula. So I'll mash that around just to mix it. And it, it really doesn't have a lot of liquid to it, but you're really going to get the flavor from the tomatoes. Now what I'm going to do is I have my tomatoes. I'm just cutting the top part off. Got a really nice yellow tomato. Here, Michelle, will show you that one. Either way. Okay, stay there. Okay, there you go. There you go. Beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thinly slice these tomatoes. I'm going to put them in the bowl. Now I've got my purple tomatoes that you saw me pick. Yep. Look at that tomato. It's amazing. That, that for March 2nd or 3rd that it is today, it's just really amazing that we can get this kind of, you know, really quality and flavors. So now I'm slicing all these tomatoes okay. to go in. And we're not going to use a sauce. This is wow. another steak. Look at that one. Beautiful seeds. Yep. Really meaty though. Did so, you say no sauce on this this dish today? Nope. The sauce is coming from the olive oil, the nice flavors of the tomatoes, and we're going to put this together and we're going to see. Perfect. I love it. Everything about it so far I love. Yeah. Really nice. I've got one more tomato to show you, and then oh. we're going to get going on this. And again, this is why it's so simple. And this is a dish that I usually make in the summertime with uh, tomatoes and the squash that I get out of our garden, whether it's the yellow crookneck or the uh, zucchini squash, where I'll panko those. So now I'm gonna, Michelle's gonna pick this up. Look at the color on those tomatoes. Beautiful. And now you can see there's a little bit more liquid going on, a really nice flavors developing. And now lastly, I'm just gonna put a little bit of kosher salt 
And then I'm going to use a little bit of black pepper. All of this stuff is so easy, no matter where you guys are, are so watching from, they could be watching from back East and everything can be grown in containers on your patio, yeah. all of this. It's true. Now I've got a little bit of Italian seasoning. I just put a little dry in there just to give it a little bit more of a flavor profile. Now, Michelle's going to show, I just have a cookie sheet with some aluminum foil on it. And the reason for that is when you come home, you really don't want to be cleaning a cookie sheet after. If you put <laughs> the aluminum foil down for something like this, it is going to make your life a lot easier and faster to get it done. So I'm making three basically stacks and my hands are clean. And this is the fun thing where you get to use your hands mm. where I'm going to put a little bit of the tomatoes on this to layer it. And then I'm taking some mozzarella cheese, put that on. Let's forgot one here. So a little bit of mozzarella cheese on top. Then I come back. I'm going to top, actually put one more tomato in there. It's almost like an eggplant sandwich. Yeah. Or an eggplant stack. So now I'm topping it off with the rest of the tomatoes. When you think of eggplant parmesan, you think of flat, flattened. You really do. And that's the fun. I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's the yeah. fun thing about cooking. You can make it whatever you'd like. Right. Okay, now I'm just putting some of the tomato juice, the rest of the basil on top. Now I'm covering it with some more cheese. Now these are actually pretty tall. What you can do is you can actually make it, if we want to see how tall these are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them down and we're gonna make four stacks. I'm gonna nice. rearrange my thought process here because I'm looking at it, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to eat. So I put the uh, mozzarella on. Now I'm gonna sprinkle a little Parmesan on top. And voila, there's okay. our eggplant Parmesan with fresh, easy, available ingredients. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Now from the oven, I got the oven on a bake, and right now it's about 425. I'm gonna put it down to about 375. It's on a convention bake where it's just gonna slowly cook for about 15 minutes. Okay. And that's something that if uh, in you're in a time crunch or, or you have too much time, you can turn it off and kind of open the oven and let it sit in there to cool down. Okay. Okay. Really quick, I'm going to rinse off this cutting board really quick. While we do that, I'll show another video of another trip to your garden today. Take a look at this, you guys. Look at his Swiss chard. My garden, this is kind of like the end of the winter garden, mm -hmm. but um, Swiss chard which is really good for uh, greens. In a salad, it's a little bit um, uh, tough, kind of like uh, the older um, kale, but for steaming this, it's really good. And even the stem parts are really good for um, walking, meaning, you know, sauteing yeah. first, and then you add the glaze. But look how beautiful. It's, this look is at the called color. The, yeah, this is obviously called, or for its name, the rainbow chard. Oh, wow. So just really different colors. Does the color change the flavor? No, not at all. Okay. No, it's just different colors. Okay. And then I've got onions here. Really unique. I've got my um, first time I've done, it was celery. Oh, nice. It's a really Look. fresh celery. Now, did you start that from seed or the no, top I got of the celery? I got starts okay. on these. A lot of my plants, I'll do starts okay. for the winter vegetables, just because the seeds take so long. Yeah. Um, but then I do a lot of seed starting okay. for the spring and summer. Oh, that was great. Those Swiss chard and all that stuff up there looks so healthy and ready to go. It was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Swiss chard is it's similar to like a spinach, but a little bit more texture to it. Like I did say, it's similar to um, the uh, the kale. The eat kale when it's younger, it's very light and uh, soft to the mouthfeel. But as it gets older, um, that's when you want to cook it or toss it in olive oil and garlic and you can have like kale chips. That was, mm. the, you know, a couple years back, every restaurant used to have kale chips. So we are going to incorporate some of the Swiss chard into our uh, vegetable roll. So first off, I want to talk about sushi rice. Now, okay. sushi rice is just a medium grain rice. I have this Calrose rice that you can buy 
at any store, whether it's a Smart and Final or a grocery store, even Costco carries some of the big bags, but it's just a medium rice. And what you wanna do is take, I just took one cup of medium or one cup of dry rice, washed a little bit, rinsed all the water, put it in a pot, put about one and one fourth cup of water in and brought it up to a boil and then put it down to a slow simmer for 20 minutes and then turn it off and just let it sit for about 15 minutes. Okay. Then I put it in a stainless steel bowl when it was hot and I put a little bit of sushi vinegar on. I don't have the, uh, I make my own, but sushi vinegar is rice wine vinegar with a little bit of sugar and salt in that vinegar. And the salt is, or the sugar is what actually makes that rice sticky. It's okay. not the type of rice you're using. We could have easily used this rice um, after it was done cooking and just ate it as steamed rice or ate it with some type of protein on it or what have you. But putting the sushi su or the sushi vinegar on, um, and I sprinkled maybe about four tablespoons of the vinegar on here and mixed it into the rice while it was still hot. And then I let it cool. Okay. So now, so I'm I, Jerry, let me ask you really quick because uh, everybody's asking me different questions in here. So that bag of rice you bought, let's say at Costco, if they mm -hmm. can't find that, could they use a long grain or a short grain white? I mean, what do they have to use a sushi grade rice? Is that if it's not a sushi grade? Uh, you want to use a term, it's a medium grain rice. Okay. You have long grain rice that is usually used for Chinese food, walked fried rice, things of that nature. Okay. You um, The medium grain rice or the pearl rice is the rice that we use for sushi rice. And okay. you can find it in any store. Um, whether it's the uh, Asian section or the international section, they may call it, um, whether you're back East, Midwest, uh, any Vons, Stater Brothers, any of those, you know, stores will have it. Okay, um, good. Well, a little bit of that rice goes a long way. As you see, that one cup of rice made probably about two cups, you know, maybe a cup and a half, enough for probably like three or four rolls that we're going to make tonight. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. So next is the soy paper. Now the soy paper is a little bit tough um, to handle in the sense that it is very, very delicate. I took my cutting board and I put some plastic wrap on top so that there is no moisture touching the seaweed or the soy paper. Now I have two brands and these are just called soy sheets. Okay. Here's another brand and these you can go online and order them. Usually there's 20 or 10 sheets in here and um, they'll last a long time. Just take out a sheet, zip it close and it'll last or go to your international or your um, probably an Asian store is going to have, when I say Asian, it could be like H Mart over here or it yeah. could be a Japanese store that will carry some of these soy paper. And you okay. said you saw those on, on Amazon, about how much were those? Um, they could be uh, right around fifteen or twenty dollars or twelve dollars, depending on the brand. But again, there's twenty sheets in there, yeah. so it comes out to be about seventy cents a sheet. Nice. Okay. Perfect. Now this is the soy paper, and this is a pink color. Um, they do come in green, orange, and again, that color is not going to have any um, bearing on the flavor. It's just uh, some of them are actually coated in sesame seeds too, oh, with a okay. different flavor. So now again, like I said, this is literally like tissue paper. So I've got to be very, very careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip a couple fingers into some water. Wash, get my hands wet. Okay. The reason for that is now I can pick up this rice without it sticking to my hands. Now we'll go back to your angle. And now I'm going to just lightly spread this rice, which is now sushi rice, because again, we put the uh, sushi vinegar on, and now this rice has cooled down. I made this probably about an hour and a half ago, and I covered it with a damp paper towel. And you can see where I'm just using my fingertips to delic delicately put the rice onto the soy paper. Right. Now, the next fun thing is, you see my ingredients here. I have some avocado, some nice red bell pepper. I pre-cooked some carrot strips, some yellow squash, some spinach, 
that I just blanched and I got all the water out. But one fun thing is this is the Swiss chard that we cooked. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer of Swiss chard down and it's going to give us a color barrier in the middle of our roll to give nice. some nice contrast. Like it. So now I'm going to get the avocado. Put the avocado in there to give some rich creaminess. First, I'm going to look at our oven really quick. Excuse me. And it does look like it is done. So what I'm going to do, if Michelle wants to look at our eggplant, look at that. It's got That's a little bit of browning going, but you can see where all the flavors of cheese are melting. Yeah. Um, do is I'm just going to turn this off and it's going to be fine. Okay. So now we'll go back to our roll. Now I'm going to put some red bell pepper. And if you look, we're really going for color profiles or contrasts of colors. And I'm sticking some of the vegetables out on the outside of the roll. So as I roll it and cut it, you're really going to be able to see some of those uh, vegetables sticking out the ends of the rolls. Okay, so now I'm putting the carrot here. So this is different meal. than the protein roll that you made, right? This is it, this is the basically the vegetarian style of the roll, but we put some rice in this, so this okay. can't be considered a pro or protein because it does have the rice or right. carb pre for that. So now this is where we get a little bit delicate. I'm going to dip my hands underneath, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plastic wrap to roll over the ingredients. If I use my hands, it may tear the soy paper, but this gives you a little bit, and you can see I'm not even using a rolling mat. You can see that I do have a rolling mat here, as Michelle's showing, but I'm not going to use that. Uh, we're just going to roll over, and now some of the plastic I put back, now with my hands a little bit dry, gently roll over and try to press down to where you get that roll to where it's a little bit tight. Okay. Now Michelle can show you where some of the spinach is out, leaking out into the soy paper that may tear that piece. So to prevent that, I'm going to roll over the plastic wrap, use the rolling mat and gently press down. Now I have my sushi roll. I'm going to use a really sharp knife and I'm going to kind of saw through it. The sawing motion is so that I don't smash the roll, that the sharpness of the knife will cut through, number one, the plastic and the soy paper without tearing the soy paper. So you're Again, cutting through the plastic. You left the plastic on while you're cutting also. I did. Now, you see how the roll kind of got a little bit rearranged but not that bad now i'm going to use my rolling mat and just gently go and reshape that and oh. now the fun thing is all you have to do is peel this plastic off the top of it now i'm going to put my knife down there so when i pull it off the plastic will stay and now i'm going to take my platter right there that michelle is going to see beautiful and i'm taking the first piece up now look at that really pretty piece. Remember I said stick some of the different colors out. Now I'm going to put these in an angle. And I got really lucky where none of the, er, the rolls or the soy paper really tore because we were really careful in number one, getting that rice all the way about two thirds on that roll. And now that's I'm your vegetable so food. drooling right now. You guys have no idea. Let's go back to yours, but here's where you can Ugh. see that. That's crazy looking. I'll go there. one more with Michelle to where she can really see the colors. Let me get there. There we go. So no so sauce on green. top, it's, no ponsu, no nothing. You no can. Nothing. I have some soy sauce here, but you can use. You can eat it by itself. You can use a dressing that you like. You can use soy sauce. You can use the sweet sauce. You can use ponzu sauce. Um, if your kids like ranch dressing and they want to put a deal, little dab in for them to eat that, hey, just a little bit of the ranch dressing. They're getting all those really nice fresh vegetables. Um, oh, yeah. The soy paper really does not have any flavor at all. 
It's just the, a medium to carry or to carry those vegetables and serve it other than the soy sauce or the uh, seaweed. Oh, it looked beautiful. That was excellent, you guys. And, and please remember, everybody, we're live on Facebook, on Stables Media, Pondering Mics, but also we're live on YouTube. So because of this, you guys don't have to write down any recipes. You don't have to do any of that. Um, if there's something you guys need, all you have to do is go to YouTube. It's there. You can write down the directions. Um, we're going to have many more. So it's a great place for you guys to go and find all right. the stuff we're talking really about. Is. Like I, I had a uh, phone conversation with my brother who likes to cook this morning too. And I was telling him what I was going to do today. And um, a lot of people are really intimidated with cooking. My daughter, my other daughter, or Carly from Boise State, she calls me all the time about, uh, you know, how do I cook this? How do I cook that? Right. And because her, her uh, roommates are really intimidated by the process. So like today I was trying to make things really easy, something that everybody can do. And once you get this comfortable, then you can start maybe looking at a, a, a recipe or two or the things that you like or you don't like, you can add or you could omit it from the, right. uh, from the recipe. Um, just make things that are going to be fun, nutritious and good to eat. And what's nice is look, we started off by showing everybody some videos. We have two more just to show, but okay. it, it was it was so perfect to be able to walk out to your backyard today because I was at his house today and we could make our meal based on what was ready in the garden. You picked that last heirloom tomato off of the, the bush. There was mint growing. That, that's what we made with your mocktail right. today. You know, the, the, obviously the eggplant wasn't there, but the Swiss chard, everything was there. But that's how you can start your meal every day by going, well, let's go out to the garden and see what we have. That's how perfect that day was. And, right. And I would say um, at the, by the end of this month or even now, you can start planning um, from seeds some of the uh, things that you want in the garden, whether it's the squashes, whether it's I even planted some carrot seeds the other day. Yeah. Um, they'll be ready probably in May, maybe early June. So good. OK, so what we got next? Where are we going? OK, we're going to take the eggplant out. I don't know if you want to show those videos really quick. I'll get I have a, just a the point. one we did with the chickens. Do you want me to go ahead and do that while yeah, you get yeah, it? Like OK. okay. So you okay. guys, we, we went to, oh, let me put it back on me. Sorry. There we go. Uh, I went over to Jerry and Michelle's house today and I am enamored with how many chickens they have. Uh, they live in Poway. So welcome to the local people that live in Poway. Um, their backyard is beautiful because it's on a nice slope. And at the very top, there are the most amazing chickens. And I'm hoping this video will come out um, nicely because I'm kind of new at this. But uh, why don't you guys take a look at this and let's see if I can do this really well. All right. Watch this video, you guys. Chickens. Uh, well, I've got an array of different pedigree chickens that I like to say. Just because we're doing a lot of different eggs. Uh, then we have Lucky, which is a Polish frizzle head. She's so ugly, she's pretty. Oh my god, I it's adorable. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a little bit early in the day. Okay. It's still, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, so we're okay. not going to have, but you can see my egg box that I made. Yeah. Some fresh eggs. And if we come in here. Ooh, look at the color. As you can see this little girl here to the left. Hey, we don't want to in there, you. but I'll just kind of. But oh, you can wow. see so far we've got. Now, did she lay all three of those? No, or no. no. Okay. She's, she hasn't laid her one. You can see a couple eggs are still warm. Wow. There's some really pretty blue. And, and a couple nice. more. You can see this egg's really small. Yeah. It's because it's come from a, uh, a younger chicken that okay. just started laying. In the last really? Week or two. So, one egg per chicken. So the, that yes. chick was sitting on two other eggs. So they kind of have their favorite nesting boxes. Okay. They like to go in where there's other eggs. Okay. So it's just you know a comfort. So egg. they'll just lay on top of each other. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they just um, rotate going in you know, yeah. whenever they feel they have to lay. Okay. And chickens usually lay anywhere from three to six eggs a week. Wow. Um, Leghorns are the more uh, reliable. So not every day. Not every day. That's no. a myth then, because no, everybody thinks that all of these chickens would lay all, like an yeah, egg no, a day, right? In the winter, they will stop laying, maybe they'll only lay one egg a week. Yeah. Because uh, during the cold weather yeah. and the shorter daylight hours, they will not lay as many eggs they can serve. Now they've started to lay. I'm getting a lot more eggs now throughout the summer as the days get a little bit longer and the weather starts warming up. How many chickens do you have? Um, I have about 35 in here. And are they, how about, how old are these? Uh, there's about six that are about two 
years, three years old, and then the rest are six months. So wow. they're just beginning to lay. These are beautiful. That one's my favorite. She's a very big hen. Wow. And she'll only lay one to two eggs a week? No, no. Right now, she's probably laying about four eggs a week. Wow. And how about the cute little one? Uh, she's laying probably about four eggs a week. <laughs> little, little white eggs on her. Little white eggs? Yes. So all of these are laying eggs. There's not a chicken in here that uh, doesn't some, lay eggs. Some are a little bit younger. They haven't started laying yet. Okay. So any you know, chickens usually start laying from five, five and a half months. Yeah. Up to probably seven months okay. in that time frame. Each chicken's and a little bit. No baby. roosters. No roosters. No, no roosters. No. Okay. No. Okay. That one. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, the chickens that he has, uh, I'm, they're most beautiful chickens I think I've ever seen. And I mean, I've seen chickens, but the colors are so amazing that when you when you showed me, I brought home some eggs last week when I was there and they were browns and greens and blues. And it was, it was amazing to think that that came out of a chicken's butt. <laughs> but it was, it was it was pretty amazing. So I hope you guys all like that. Was, especially since you put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, always, gonna... I had chickens growing up, and uh, when Michelle and I had the girls, when they were younger, having the baby chicks. I, I mean, now especially during this last year, I know a lot of people have kind of gotten back to the grassroots of whether it's cooking, staying at home, enjoying you know family, um, buying chickens, having their own eggs. And it, it's not, you know, you lose some chicks, you know, mother nature has its, you know, its own course in mind, but a chicken starts laying eggs or maybe about five and a half months, six months, six and a half months, depending on the breed. Like I mentioned some chickens like Leghorn, the white commercial, they'll lay 300, you know, 320 eggs a year. Wow. You know, they'll only take one day off here and there. But a lot of the <laughs> chicks were designed for meat and egg laying, so kind of dual purpose. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, they would actually eat them. I don't eat any of my chickens. I let them, uh, you know, just pass naturally, uh, which they can live maybe six, seven, eight years. But then as they get older, they do uh, lose their potency as far as four laying eggs. You know, they'll they'll maybe only lay a, one or two eggs per week. But I make sure that they have, you know, a, a healthy and... Uh, fun existence. Yeah. I let them free range in the yard uh, on the other side of my fence, you know, in the afternoons and then in, they eat, you know, insects, uh, grasses. So, uh, and these are some of the eggs that I, here, I'll let Michelle show you. These are my new one. Michelle and I call them the camo green eggs. Nice. They're a little bit smaller because they're coming from a younger chicken. They'll lay a smaller egg um, it's a little bit easier on their system as they're laying the first eggs. And then you can see they get a little bit bigger. We actually get some of their older chickens that lay some really nice big eggs. So these are the black upper morans. We've got some pink eggs in there, a nice uh, little blue green. They're called the Easter eggers. So a lot of different varieties. And it's fun you know, just to have that variety in the eggs that you're using. The yolks were wonderful in them. I mean, yeah, they're they're really, it was really bright egg. If you look at the eggs here, Michelle's going to show you this. That was from the egg wash. Oh. Look at the bright color. Yeah. I mean, just vibrant. And when you scrambled your eggs in the morning, I mean, the eggs, your scramble eggs are bright, bright orange. I it's agree. It's something that you don't see out of store-bought eggs. So it's pretty unique. I did, let's get back to our main course. I did take out the... Um, the eggplant from the garden, or from the oven rather, and you can see that these are ready. Nice golden brown. I'm just gonna take one and place it on this. And again, if you wanted to put a protein with this, with or whether it was just a panko chicken breast or something else you can, or a nice salad, mm -hmm. you can go along with that. I'm just gonna put this little sprig of uh, basil on that. And then what I did do is I took a few heirloom tomatoes that we had in the fridge or out in the garden when we do have them. And just from a decorating standpoint, I can put that out like that, just to kind of liven up the plate, just from yeah. a culinary oh, standpoint. Right. You want to use a white plate, number one, just to really show off the ingredients, the color profiles of um, your dish. And now Michelle's going to continue to zoom in on that. And what I'm going to do is I'll cut this in half. 
And you could see that the height of the eggplant stayed yep. high to where you're going to have some nice um, mouthfeel to it, something opposed. And now I'm going to try it. <laughs> Lucky you. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's so, so good. nice. I can see that there was no sauce, but you're right. It looks so moist and it so. Very moist from the flavor of the tomatoes, from the basil, <laughs> a little bit of the garlic and the olive oil. And again, you're only using two tablespoons on these six portions. You're really not getting that much olive oil, you know, overpowering it. But again, olive oil is really healthy for you. So again, you can go higher on the uh, herb content or whatever you'd like. You like If you don't like the garlic, you don't have to put in. But obviously, garlic and basil and olive oil, I mean, they go together like yeah. peanut butter and jelly. I tell you, it's, it's good. <laughs> so. Jerry, you're so, you know, what I love about you is um, when I when I first was thinking about having you on the show, I was thinking, oh, sushi, sushi, you know, we're going to do rolls and this and that. You are so well-rounded in knowledge of what is good that you're not just a sushi chef. So I hope people don't just call you that. I know you're well known for being that. And well, I, you know, I, I appreciate that comment. I specialize in sushi. That has been my go-to for 30 years. But going down to the Bahamas, I got to see a lot of other different culinary things or and the same thing working with the Hyatt, working through banquets and all, you get to see a lot of different foods. Um, but the most part, I enjoy eating. I like entertaining. Our family is very family oriented as far as all the holidays. Um, having people over, whether it's family or close friends, and just enjoying, you know, you know, if you want to call it breaking bread, you know, just having a really good time. So right. um, thanks for that that uh, feedback. But uh, I do. I, I just like good. You know, I was trying to think of what I wanted to do, and I didn't want to go through and make you know, a recipe that I haven't done or something that may be intimidating. So I was just talking to Michelle and I'm like, I'm just going to do something that we cook for dinner that I do in yeah. the summer. Things that are inspired by, you know, the phrase farm to table. I think it's overused now, but it's kind of a lifestyle for us. Yeah. Um, and my garden is my Zen moment. You know, yeah. Michelle loves to bake and I love when she bakes, but um, <laughs> that's her Zen moment. You can tell whenever she's stressed, she's, I come home and there's baked goods. There's oh cookies. yeah. And I go, what are you doing with all this? And she brings it into work. She just passed it out to the neighbors. So it's yep. uh, really refreshing for both Michelle and I just to have our, our passions that revolve in the kitchen the gardening, our flowers. You know, I'm really excited for future episodes where I've got my dahlias that I plant or all my gladiolas are coming up. All those things that Michelle thinks I'm crazy because I'm utilizing every square inch of the backyard <laughs> for, you know, whether it's fruit trees and vegetables right. and flowers, but it's something that we enjoy as a family and as a couple. So it, it's really rewarding in that sense. And I, I love having you on because I learned something new every time. When I was there and you made me the protein roll, I asked what that soy paper was. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I kind of put a little hint in his his head today and said, I really want you to make something with that soy paper because right. it really was something that I liked. And the no rice, of course, with me, you know, with my diet and stuff. So you guys, anybody local, um, Jerry does catering and sushi. I was there on Sunday last week and it is amazing how many orders went out that door. He's prepping sushi and edamame and all of these rolls. And for anybody local, I just put his information up there. You guys can go ahead and order. And Jerry today was very, very uh, nice to my my um, audience today and said that if you guys order local and uh, mention Pondery Mike's, you're going to get a huge, large order of that uh, garlic edamame that we did today. Yep, I'd be um, happy to. Yeah. And I'm jealous because I love that stuff. Um, so I want to thank you for coming back on. Uh, we are going to do this more and more. I'm hoping that the YouTube channel will be blown up with people asking questions. If you guys have any questions and you want to get a hold of Jerry and you want him to do a private party, um, he does a ton of catering. He's a very busy man. Please give him a couple months out sometimes, uh, depending on what you got. And um, Jerry, Michelle, you guys are awesome. We guys and lastly, if anyone wants any gardening tips yeah. that want to grow in their area, you know, like I said, my brother lives on the coast. They have a little bit uh, a different growing because the uh, weather is so much temperate, cooler yeah. than we are here in Powell. So there's some do's and don'ts and some things that, you know, do well and things that do even better, you know, on the coast. 
you know, talking about strawberries, like I have to grow them earlier where on the coast they can go a later right. season because it doesn't get as hot. So there's some little nuances. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've had some, some successes that I can share with people to right. take some shortcuts to where, you know, to be a little bit more successful. We're putting you in the yeah, right the direction. Comments, the comments are flying in here. Everybody's saying, great job. Of course, April said, get in my belly. Um, yeah. the, you know, uh, Patty's obviously proud of her her son-in-law. I love that. And Margie's saying, awesome. Yes, we are going to make this a, a, a segment on the show. I love it. Jerry loves it. And um, we love giving it to all you guys. So, Jerry, thanks again. Michelle, love you. I'll talk to you guys thank soon. You. Thanks for, thanks. Thank you for having us on. All right. Enjoy. Thanks, you. guys. Thanks. Bye, everybody.